praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for the promises that you have given to us. We thank you that we know without any reservation that you will do what you said you will do. We give you honor, we give you praise, and that gives us tremendous peace tonight as believers, as followers of you. We praise you. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, sister. Let's give the Lord a praise tonight as we... Well, I'm excited about Pastor and giving us an update next Wednesday, each Wednesday evening. That'll be, that'll be exciting and challenging. And uh, news is wonderful when it's the truth. <laughs> I like truthful news. Amen? And thank God for the Word of God because it is, is truth. Let me say thank you for praying for Sister Russell. We went through all the tests and all those kinds of things. And Monday we got good reports. They said she has an aorta that is thickening, but the surgeon said, I think it's good for another 10 or 15 years. <laughs> so <laughs> that'll put her in her 80s. So, but he said there's one requirement, you know, her medication so far is doing, doing well with her, but uh, we're going to start this journey because she's not going to start it without me. She's got to walk 30 minutes a day four times a week. That's a mile. So uh, I'm going to have to hold her hand to get through that. Or they may be picking me up, but no. No, but uh, if that's all that's needed, praise God. Amen. I praise the Lord that. Another, we got news yesterday with our medical clinic in Belize. We have, there's a medical team there with two or three doctors and nurses and staff and uh, a church. And uh, they've been seeing a few hundred this week. And Monday, 12, they led 12 to the Lord. Yesterday, they led seven to the Lord. And it's, it's phenomenal what, what that mobile clinic is doing. It's, it's fulfilling its purpose. And all of you are part of that. It's, it's exciting. And I put some pictures there on Facebook, Global Awakening, and I think on my personal page. So if, if you look at that, share it, because we need all of our people knowing that what you've invested in is, is it's happening and it's exciting. And it's other churches in different states coming and, and using that clinic. And it's a wonderful, beautiful thing that God is doing. So we praise the Lord for that. Tonight, we want to continue with a uh, lesson about being strategic. But uh, tonight, I want to just make one statement, and this is what I'm going to share with you tonight. Life purpose. Life purpose. And I'm going to be in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. But Thomas Carlyle, born in 1795, died in 1881, said this, the man without a purpose is like a ship without a rudder, a waff, a nothing, a no man. Have a purpose in life, and having it throw such strength of mind and muscle into your work as God has given you. When we know our life purpose, we are challenged to throw everything into that life purpose. If it you have a job, a profession, a business. We, we, we put our all into it. We invest ourselves into that. But, and that is good and that is what we should do. But there is something that what I call the higher calling. And that is we as believers, as followers of Christ, our life purpose is to share the gospel 
of Jesus Christ with every person we meet. Amen. I had someone with me this week, my, one of my brothers and uh, a pastor, uh, met a pastor in town and, and we had our greetings and, and uh, he said, who is this with you? And I said, it's my brother. And uh, I said, it's my brother Alvin and uh, this uh, Christian businessman and pastor looked at Alvin just at the onset. Is everything all right with you and Jesus? And of course, Alvin said, yes, everything's all right. Now that is the heart and the passion of those of us that know Christ. And we can tell our story of what he has done for us. And so we should put energy, effort into our life purpose. There was a composer of yesteryear. He put a sign on his gate. Visiting hours Monday and Tuesday between 3 and 5. Other times, please do not ring the bell. Two hours on Monday and Tuesday. Don't ring the bell any other time. He was living out his life purpose. And what he was saying is, I'm a composer. This is how I'm going to bless the world. Not by idle conversation. This composer knew his purpose and lived his life in the fullest according to his life purpose. Now, are we living our lives? Are we living them with purpose? With everything that's within us? How exciting is your relationship with Jesus Christ? Is it telling? Do people know that you have been with Jesus? Do they know that you are in this tremendous love relationship? He is your Savior. It is obvious that He is. But not only that, you have such a relationship with Him that it shines through in everything you say, in everything that you do. It bears out in the relationships you have. It bears out in the way you work, the way you conduct your business. It bears out in every aspect of your life. Is it not true that as believers, our lives in here on Wednesday and Sundays are just like they are all the rest of the time out there? Right? Our life purpose is to be fulfilled in totality, in our everyday life. I just am not spiritual here. My wife was yesterday day before was at the fair, and I'd been called to pray with somebody late one night last week, and I went to Richmond to pray in this critical situation. And somebody in the family that was there after I'd prayed or when I'd prayed talked to Sister Russell and they said, they began to talk about what I'd done. And Sister Russell stopped them. And this is what she said. She said, I live with my husband. I know my husband. My husband lives what he preaches. But it wasn't my husband that done that work. It's obvious when we're committed. But our commitment brings about God moving. Our prayers of faith our acts of faith. But we don't do it 
for praise. We do it because we're supposed to do it. It's our lifestyle. It's the way we are. It's our life purpose. And I praise God for that. In Ephesians chapter 3, I want to read verse 1 through 8, and then I want to give you three things tonight. I want to give you three biblical insights concerning your life purpose. And uh, we'll, we'll learn from this this evening. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 1. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you had heard of the dispensation of grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has not been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, of which I became a minister according to the gift of of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. And then he sums it up in verse 8 with this. To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. This was Paul's Life purpose. What a life purpose. To come and preach the gospel. To take it to we Gentiles. Not only in his day, he went to many nations. He went to the nations of Asia. He went on three major missionary journeys taking this gospel. And he said, I'm the least of the least. But he said, this grace was given to me. Now, let me say this to you tonight. The same grace given to Paul has been given to you and I. Now, you may not be called to be an apostle or chosen to be an apostle, are one that is to go into the nations specifically, but you and I are all called to go and to do and to fulfill our life purpose. There's three biblical insights concerning your life purpose. Number one, your purpose is designed by God to glorify God. Your life purpose is designed by God to glorify God. Um, do you believe that? Now, let's get personal here for tonight. How many of you know without any doubt your life purpose? Don't raise your hand, but do you know your life purpose? You know what you're supposed to do as a believer? Yes. If you don't, go see pastor. <laughs> He's got plenty of time to talk to you about your life purpose. And, 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 <laughs> and, and your life purpose is exciting. I'm living my most exciting life now. And, and this, this exciting life in ministry started fi almost 55 years ago. But, but it, it, it gets more exciting as the days go by. You know, I, I started out years and years ago and as, as, as just a young preacher. Uh, and we, we attempted to preach and travel and sing and, and uh, uh, at the Park Road Church where 
Sister Debbie was raised and, and so forth. And my dad pastored, then her father followed and pastored all of these years. But there were, there were, were those days where, that we had exciting choir, exciting things were, were happening. And, and uh, it, was, it was in our youth. And it, it, it was wonderful. And, but as we grew, as we matured, the, the, the work of God expanded. More responsibility, different challenges begin to happen. And all of the congregations and fellowships and denominations later, we're here with you working in our hometown and, and, and believing God for greater things. But, but the, the, the challenges, you know, the, the day-to-day work of being a pastor for me is, is, is over, as, as far as I know. <laughs> and and uh, th- those days are past for me. And I'm, I'm walking in a different place. But it's my life purpose. Your life purpose starts, it grows and matures. And, and, and the longer you follow the Lord, the longer you live for God, the more mature you become and the more that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know. It's such an assurance. It's such a peace that passes understanding to be able to fulfill your life purpose. The time I spend with young pastors and young preachers and missions activists, I love that time. I love that iron, sharpening iron. But you know, these young men and women, they're they're on fire for God, just like we were on fire in our younger years. But they're on fire in a different manner. They're doing things different. <laughs> they really are. And, and, and I was challenged a few days ago that, that, that maybe we needed to fight about some of these things. I said, what in the world is, is, should we fight? Let God's people do God's work. Amen? Let them do it their way. Praise God. And, and, and they will find their place. They may not be doing it the way we would do it, and they may not be doing it right yet, but they will. See, I have that much confidence in the people of God. I have that much confidence in the grace that was extended to Paul and extended to you and I. It will always work out. That's the optimist in me. (laughs) But that's the way I live. That's the way I believe. And I believe that's the way all of us should, should. The best is yet for the church. Amen. The pastor probably shared some things with this news updates and things, you know, when we read and study, there's some things that I'm not prepared to share yet. There's some things I'm seeing that I'm not ready to share yet. But this one thing I will share with you, that in the midst of all that is happening and about to happen, the church is going to be at its prime. I believe that with all of my heart. Praise God. I know that to be a fact because God's word is true. Nothing's going to change, thus saith God. Amen. When he said, I am the God that healeth thee, that's what he meant. When he said, I'll restore everything that the canker worm has taken, That means that he's going to do that. And that means that we can live out our life purpose, though intimidated, though distracted, though the enemy coming against us, we will stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and our life purpose will be accomplished. Amen? God gives us our life purpose. It's designed by him 
to glorify him. Number two, your purpose will fit perfectly with the gifts and graces God has given you. Now I want to dwell on this just for a moment. Your life purpose accommodates your talents and gifts. Some people were not called into ministry. Now, I'm not being mean. Don't. Pastor's not going to get mean tonight. But some people were called by their own. I'll leave it there. Their gifts, their talents were totally out of balance with what they were wanting to do. Flesh will cause us a lot of trouble. Our own personal desires. You know, I was raised in a generation where when you were called to preach by God, you were called to preach. You didn't, you didn't go into the office and discuss salary, pay, housing. <laughs> that was never discussed. The thing that was discussed, how can I effectively fulfill my calling and life purpose? That was first. Everything else come last. I know things have changed. Now, I, I have to deal with the, all these other issues with, with pastors and young pastors like never before. They want to know a lot of things that I would have been afraid to ask. <laughs> I would not have dared to ask. That's the changes that have come. But it does not relieve us of living out our life purpose. You see, the church that God has called, that God has birthed, is a church that is the church, 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 no matter what's going on. We are the church. And, and, and church, being the church of Jesus Christ, is first. It's first. Life purpose. I was with some folks this afternoon. I love them. They're great people, good people. And they asked me why I wasn't Involved in something. And <laughs> they shouldn't ask questions like that. And, and, and I knew that it was a trick question. And I discerned real quickly. And I, my simple reply was this. I am in this world, but not of this world. And I, I left it there. I didn't want to get engaged in something that's worthless. And, 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 you know, we all have our opinions, don't we? But our life purpose is more important than our opinions. I can give you a lot of opinions, but they wouldn't be right, and you wouldn't like me as much if I... <laughs> So it's best to keep some opinions to yourself so that your life purpose can be accomplished. Your purpose will fit perfectly with the gifts and graces God has given you. Years ago, I had a 
growing, thriving church. And, and I had some people that were gun ho I mean, they wanted to conquer the world. I love those kind of situations. But uh, they were all gifted and, and, and talented. And, and anything you would mention, they'd say, okay, pastor, let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it. I said, okay, let's go. Let's do it. But I started putting them in different departments and responsibilities. And I'd have several in each part of the ministry. But I began to have conflict because some of the leaders of the groups, they were, they had the same talents and the same gifts. You don't put two people that want to be boss <laughs> over the same situation. God's given them the gift to be a leader and to delegate and fulfill a, 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 a goal. And that's wonderful. But you have to diversify the gifts within that setting so that the purpose can be fulfilled. And we have to understand, we have to come to the point of, as believers of in our life, we know our weaknesses and we know our strengths. And we stay away from working with our weaknesses. And we work in our strengths. Because that's where our, the most fruit is produced. That is where your life purpose accomplishes much more. If you're always working in your weaknesses, you'll end up in trouble. You really will. If your gift is not administration, don't you be an administrator. <laughs> if your gift is serving, get in that ministry of serving at whatever level. And serving at any level is honorable and brings glory to God. Fulfill your life purpose. I can talk about my kids, my three daughters. My oldest daughter is, is a mothering spirit. I mean, she just... It bugs me the way she mothers her kids. <laughs> let them, let them. You know, she's talking to them all the time, talking to them all the time. She was up here a month. She was on the phone with them kids. All, them, they're married. They're grown. I said, I said, I don't call you all the time. But see, that's her nature. That's her gift. She wants to mother those kids, take care of her husband. She takes care of her home and prepares food and all of these kinds of things. And, and she's serving her church. She has served her church for over 30 years now. She went there when I, we went there to pastor. She married my youth pastor. And they've been there all these years. Beautiful. She, she's faithful. She loves that church. She mothers those people that she loves. My middle daughter, Lord, help us. She just, she's gifted. She's an administrator. She, she works a tremendous job. And, but, 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 but she's so exuberant. I, I say you speak evangelistically too much. <laughs> I said, you, 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 you make these stories bigger than they really are. <laughs> Everybody loves her. She, you know, she's the life of a party. She loves God. But she also has a servant heart. 
She's living out her life mission. She and her husband, Brant, they're, they're, he's on the board. He's a leader in the church. They've been part of that for nearly 30 years. And they've been without a pastor for almost a year. A friend, a friend of mine, pastor for 30-something years, retired. And they know how I feel. There ought to be a pastor there. I, I told them while they were here, I said, you need to trust God to give you your pastor. Quit trying to find him yourself. <laughs> Just the way it is. I mean, you don't need a committee to find God's will. Hello? Let me tell you the way it is out there. We need to pray. We need to seek God's face. We need to fulfill our life's purpose. People are coming. They want, they, they want to lead. They want to fulfill. They want to accomplish something great for God. But they want everything up front. What about digging the ditch? What about mowing the lawn? What about manicuring the flowers and all of those kinds? What about making sure the sanctuary is? Folks, ministry is at every level. Life purpose is fulfilled at every level. And we ought to enjoy it. I don't know. I'm not looking for another job. I'm not looking for another position. I just want to fulfill my life's purpose while I'm here with you. Serving pastor. Lifting up his hands. Telling him he's doing a good job. Somebody was telling me he really preached Sunday morning. He always preaches. You know why I love pastors? Because I was one and is one. <laughs> and there was a few times in my fulfilling my life purpose, I needed somebody to lift up my hands. I needed somebody to say, you're doing a good job. Even when I wasn't. <laughs> They'd say, you're going to make it, pastor. Right? Right? This is why when we get into the reality of our life purpose, we'll find some encouraging words for those around us that are fulfilling theirs. That's the beauty of the kingdom. That's the beauty of the family of faith. Your life purpose. And the last but not least, your purpose will be realized through God's power, not your own. It'll be realized through God's power, not your own. We eventually learn that. When we first start, we think we can do it on our own. And uh, we eventually find out that our purpose will be realized through God's power. That is such a comforting, stabilizing source for us when we understand it. God, it's your power, not my own. Anybody here, don't raise your hand. Have you... Have any of you ever tried to do ministry or some kind of ministry on your own? I have. And all it done was create problems. It's God's power. In Kokomo, I 
when I first went there, I brought all the staff together. And uh, it, amazing work. And I had 22, 23 of our leaders in a classroom. And I was doing spiritual gift testing. And I was doing personality traits. And, and, and they had to be honest. I said, if you're going to be on staff, you're going to be part of the leadership team, you're going to be, you got to be honest. If you're not going to be honest, I want you to leave. Boy, that, that settled everybody down real quick. You know, and I was a new pastor, and I said, now listen, we, I want to know who you are. I want to know your gifts. I want to know your talents. I want to know your personality traits. And uh, so we started going through that about 10 weeks. And there, was so, there were those aha moments. My associate pastor said, all, one, one night he just, wow, now I know why I don't like her. <laughs> I mean, we had a revival of honesty and transparency because there had been conflict, but they didn't realize the reason of the conflict. For us to fulfill our life purpose, we have to remove conflict. And conflict is removed by study and becoming aware of each other's gifts and talents. Callings, anointings that God puts upon us. Ministry becomes much easier when we understand these things. But you have to be mature enough to come to that place that you realize that you don't know everything. <laughs> I sure don't know everything. But I know somebody that does. And he gave Paul grace to fulfill his life purpose. So he's given me grace. He's given you grace to fulfill your life's purpose. And he's going to do it with his power, not yours. Well, has this helped you tonight? I pray that it's encouraged you. I want us to stand. I could, I love this kind of thing. I love sharing. But your most exciting days of your life can be right here in this ministry. Did you know that life gives life? When, when you're excited about the kingdom of God, when you're excited about what God's doing, it just creates an environment of expectancy where your life purpose is accomplished. doesn't alleviate heartache and the loss of a lot of things sometimes. Monday night, all of my siblings gathered at Dad's home. First time we met since he passed and my brother Pastor Don in Texas was on camera with us and we went through dad's things and the will and all those kinds of things and 13 of us there was a lot to go through And my baby sister, about an hour into it, it was about a three-hour deal. But my baby sister said, let me say something. She was crying. She says, 
do you realize this is just what mom and dad would want? There's 13 of us and we're not fighting. We're not fussing. We're not debating. She says, we're all preferring one another. And she summed it up with this. This is just what mom and dad would want and this is the way they raised us. I got to thinking about that and whew, I had an aha moment. Did you know it takes some effort but if you put effort into it your life is going to be beautiful. It's going to be effective. Your life purpose will be an example to everybody around you. They're fulfilling their life purpose. Jesus, I love you tonight. Father God, I thank you that you are our Father God. Holy Spirit, I thank you for living inside us. You're not on a far journey. You're not somewhere else. You are in us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And because of the calling and the gifts and talents that you have placed in us. You call us to that place where our life purpose accomplishes much. I pray tonight, Lord, that each of us would be even more aware of our life purpose. I pray that it would excite us to know that we have one and that we can, that it can be enhanced and our lives can be so much more fulfilling. I pray, Lord, for any person here tonight that would be discouraged, that these words would have encouraged them, that they have a bright future as they follow you as they live out their life purpose. You've given them a mission. Some may not have found that yet, may not have accepted it yet, may not have understood it yet, but they will. will. It's a process. And God, you have this tremendous thing called grace. And Paul talks about this great grace that he experienced. And Father, we thank you for this great grace that we experience tonight too. Strengthen us. Go with us. And we know that you'll never leave us alone. While our heads are bowed, are you here tonight and you have a special request? And you want us to pray. You have something you want us to pray. You can just raise your hand. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Lord. You have a special need. You would want to come. Stand here at the altar. And have us pray. Anoint you with oil. That's available if you wish. Father, thank you for each hand that was raised. You know what it represents, the need, the hurt, the challenge. It could be a, a host, a multitude of things. Only they and you know. But Lord, you know 
even before they ask and even before they pray. And we pray for these specific needs tonight. We pray for that grace to be experienced by them in every circumstance. We pray tonight, Lord, that we would be encouraged as we live out our life purpose and may we live it out without hesitation or reservation. In closing tonight, Lord, I pray for awakening. I pray for revival in America. I pray, God, for your mighty Holy Ghost power to invade every sanctuary in our city, every fellowship, every denomination. I pray every man and woman of God that's preaching, teaching, the five-fold ministry that's active in local churches, I pray that there be an, 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 an anointing as never before upon their giftings and callings. God, that we together would live out our life purpose as the church and live it out as individually without hesitation or reservation. Raise within us a spirit of expectation. God, make us sensitive to hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church tonight. We will not quench your Spirit. We will not say no to what you speak to us. Strengthen us tonight, O oh God. We thank you and we praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, anoint the service Sunday morning. As pastor's preparing and his heart is being prepared by Holy Spirit. I pray for freedom and anointing as never before. I pray, oh God, that he would be bold as he speaks, thus saith the Lord. A holy boldness. And I pray that within the hearts of those that are here, there would be a holy reception. A holy reception to your word. Thank you, Lord, tonight. Let's sing that song, Sister Debbie, as we close tonight. Tried and true. Thanksgiving. Oh, yes, I'll be a living. So weary for you. Lord, prepare me, oh yes, to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, oh yes, tried and true, with thanksgiving. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. God bless you. You're dismissed tonight. Love one another. <laughs>